Yes. Hi guys, hope you can hear me okay. I'm still on the deck of our ferry leaving the Foton. So the, the Foton Isles are behind us and ahead we're going back to the mainland. On our way north we came on the Burdu to Moskenes ferry which took three hours. Uh, the dogs, poor dogs had to wait in the van, slightly traumatised. Um, and Harris and I were pretty traumatised as well. It was about as choppy a crossing as, as we could have had, really. That gets you to the south of Lofoten. We managed to get to the north of the Lofoten Isles. So this is the Dingen, the Dingen? Sorry, the Dingen to Bognas. Perfect pronunciation, I think, there. Um, and it's only an hour. Let's go and have a look over here. Uh, the dogs are very happily in the pet room. I'm going to go and join them and try and put together yesterday's interview that, uh, that we did with Jerry. So it will already be up on YouTube by the time that you've seen, by the time you're watching this. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you haven't watched it, make sure you do. Um, I hope that by the time I put it together, it sounds as good and it's as enjoyable and as informative as it felt it was when I was speaking to him. Such an interesting bloke. But now we'll say farewell to the Foton and get back to the mainland. And then we're going to start making our way south. As you can see, it's cloudy, it's overcast. We were toying with the idea of driving all the way up to Nordcap, the most northerly point of the mainland, but pointless, really, unfortunately. But we're not going to push our luck. We've done, we've done pretty well. We've driven up into the Arctic Circle, past the Arctic Circle, to the Foton, all the way through the north, out the other side um, of the, the Foton Isles, and we've still got thousands of miles ahead of us. It's 18 hour drive from here to Stockholm. So we've got a long way still to go. We don't need to push our luck. Uh, we've got a bunch of golf courses to play on the way back through as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing those. Hi. Let me give you a little tour of this ferry. So this is a much smaller one than the Burda to Moskines one. Here we are, this is our route. Bogners get to Oh, I don't even, I'm not even going to start pronouncing that. Ludingen, Lerdingen, Lerdingen. That sounds, that sounds good, doesn't it? Look out the window. No, we just were. You can get your ice creams. Little cafe area. Sandwich. This is just like a scaled down version of the same one for the Burdu. I think this is the VIP lounge, which don't tell you what. There's only one. Only one VIP. Only one VIP in the VIP lounge. 
I'm gonna run away before he dobs me in it. Play area. Just have a quick look from the front. It's a bit. Don't think you're seeing much there today. Feels like we're sailing through a cloud. A little bit better on this side. You can at least see the silhouette of the photon. And that's it, really. There's not much else doing. Cars are done below. Get another little seating area. And then through here, you just need to follow the noise of the slightly perturbed dog barking we have. Winner Watts and has. Hello. Hello, Winnie. Yeah, okay, this is better, isn't it? Than being downstairs. Are you relaxed, Wen? Here we are, just coming into the port. Let's go and find the van. boat section. Okay, so we're back off the ferry and there's another reason why we decided to head south rather than carry on north up to Tromsø and on to Nordcap. So from the ferry, Nordcap's about 12 hours north still. Um, and with everything we've seen about Google Maps in Norway so far, 12 hours is probably more like 14, 15 hours. Everything seems to take a little bit longer. Um, and unfortunately, it's just rain set in. Uh, the cloud coverage is not really getting below 90%. And one of the things, one of the reasons we wanted to come up here is to see the Northern Lights. So the last trip that Harry and I made before COVID actually was to this part of the world. So in February 2020, we went to Rovaniemi in Finland, which is probably not a million miles away from here. And we went to you know, hopefully try and see the Northern Lights and to go and do some, we did some husky sledding and, um, you know, all, all of those kind of traditional Lapland, Northern winter pursuit stuff. And it was lovely, but, you know, not once did we have clear skies and not once did we have a sniff at seeing the Northern Lights. So having had cloud and rain ever since really we got into the Arctic Circle. We've spent a bit of time on YR, Jur, however you pronounce it, the uh, Norwegian weather app, which is excellent. Um, and it's also, it has on it a sort of aurora forecast and it combines the KP index, which is the uh, geomagnetic uh, activity that's going on. So sort of every three hours that changes and it gives you an indication of how strong, effectively, how likely it is you'll see the Northern Lights. But, of course, that's not the sole factor. If it's cloudy, you ain't seeing anything. And that's our reality right now. So, let's say we drive eight hours a day and drive north 
up to Nordcap and see virtually nothing. Um, well, that's going to take uh, probably three days of driving to get from here up to Nordcap and back down just to where we are right now. Um, and with so much time ahead of us, we've really got to think about how we like to spend that time. And I think exploring Stockholm, uh, exploring Sweden a bit more, having a slightly more leisurely pace back, back home and going and seeing some of those golf courses that I really want to see uh, still ahead of us that was really part of our decision. So it would have been lovely to go up to Nordcap, maybe one day we'll do it, uh, but it really wasn't looking like it was going to be the play this time. So we've been looking at Euro, at YR, and, and trying to find where would be the best place to go and, uh, to go and see it. And, Harriet's done some research and it looks like there's a place just over the Swedish border which is still in the Arctic Circle that has the clearest skies. It looks like we've got a good KP index tonight. It looks like it's going to be four. Four out of nine. You know, that's, that's pretty good. I don't know what it was when it was visible down in Britain. Maybe five or six or so. But four is good. Four gives us a good chance. And also going a bit further south, you know, it sounds counterintuitive going further south to go and try and find the Northern Lights, but the further north we are, the lighter it sort of is at night, the later it is as it gets properly dark. Typically, the best time to see the Northern Lights is around midnight, and further north we go, it will still be kind of light around midnight, so that doesn't help either. So all those things together we thought this is the sensible sensible thing to do drive across Norway start to head south southeast really um, and try and find a really secluded really quiet really dark place that we can park up tonight and give ourselves the best chance of seeing the Northern Lights. Who knows, will we do it? Maybe, I certainly hope so. It's sort of one of those bucket list things for us. And we've had such an amazing time driving up to the Arctic that to see the Northern Lights, even just to see the, the, you know, the full stars in the skies because we've seen nothing but clouds, you know, to see um, the majesty overhead would really cap off what's been an extraordinary trip all of this way north so we're going to keep driving and see if we can find somewhere that will work you never know